Anyway, I just uh, uh, want to welcome everybody, and uh, and um, we have we'll have now the approval of the corrections of the minutes of the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting of March 28th, 2024, and the Committee Department reports monthly financial report. <coughs> Anybody have any questions? Make a motion to accept. All second. Okay. We'll move on. We'll have now our uh, visitors' comments. Anybody want to? We'll skip the whole call and we'll take a vote on that. Okay. Roll call. Alderman Jim Baer. Yes. Here. Alderman John Gibson. Yes, here. Alderman Jim Gillen. Here. Alderman Darby Patrick. Here. Alderman Mandy <coughs> Shore. Yes, and here. <coughs> Vice Mayor Teresa Malt. Here. Mayor Pat Stillwell. Here. Now we'll take a vote on the uh, <coughs> this uh, approval of the corrections of the minutes. Do I have? Mindy made the motion. Oh, okay. I, anyway. I'm in favor. So I'm in favor. So I'm in favor. Or you want to take? <laughs> I'm in favor too. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those who disapprove, we'll move on. Visitors' comments. All people wishing to address the board shall stand and state your name and your address and shall be limited to the brief presentation. The board may not participate in any discussion and cannot vote on the subject that you present. Absence and emergency. Earliest time the board might discuss this is and vote on the matter will be at the next board meeting. Individuals or groups, representatives, who have placed an item on tonight's agenda will be allowed to make a brief comment when the agenda item is open for discussion. Do I have any comments? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm an employee. I live at 176 Melville Chris Drive. And I want to say my thoughts and prayers with the family that lost their home on Sherbert Drive today <laughs> of the, the house fire. And I want to bring up a safety issue and environmental issue. The Rocket Center. What is the deal with the Rocket Center? They're crushing a bunch of cars and stuff, and all that old fluid and stuff is leaking down there, and it is like it's like a swamp zone. So all that stuff is going into what wastewater and stuff, and it just looks jumped up. And I thought we was going to try to start improving Main Street, but down there the, the, the rock center used to be up here. Now it's in the flood zone. So I just want to bring it up, and you know Mount Cromwell needs to start getting after these people. It's not taking care of the place. You know Mount Cromwell's a nice place. Some of them like me, Buster, that would make my house look good. And then you got home cars and stuff that sit in parking lots. I mean, their driveways for seven or eight years without no uh, no tags or anything. <clears throat> you know, it, I, we need to clean up Mount Carmel a little bit. I mean, you know, to go after these people that's not mowing their yards and jump and stuff, sitting in their houses and stuff. So that's all I got to say. <clears throat> Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Stand and speak your name, please. Yes, my name is Ann Boland. And I've been a resident of Mount Carmel for over 40 years. I want to thank Mayor Stillwell on the work she did for getting my husband and I a home improvement grant. Had it not been for her, I never would have known it even existed. I think it's so good that the city of Mount Carmel that does things for, like this for senior citizens. My husband has a terminal illness and it's greatly much appreciated this time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> State my, your name, please. My name is Gary Manson. I live at 801 Hammond Dow. And I want to talk a little bit about the budget. I guess in the budget, um, the town is going to look for increases in pays for upwards to 5%, which is, I think, quite a bit of money. <clears throat> Excuse me? Not for with an egg. Well, first of all, you're out of order, okay? So sit and be quiet, please, while I'm speaking. No, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm doing what's correct, politically correct, okay? Thank you. You're rude because you're talking. Um, 
5% is high. 5%, they're talking about the limit. That's fine, but you know what? Who pays 5% anymore? Nobody. They're all down below 2%, maybe, if not less. So 5%, upwards to 5% is just out of the question. Also, I have a concern in this town. I hear there's a lot of complaints about chickens. I made a complaint three weeks ago, and I'm still waiting for a phone call that I gave Emily my name and phone number. Never got a call yet. Still waiting. I don't know what's up with that. And the other thing I want to say to you is that I know somebody that do your job for half the pay, if not less. So keep that in mind. Thank you. What did you say you were not Gary Manson. Anybody else? I am still at Binstock. I live at 136 Meadow Springs Lane. And I wanted to address the issue of the uh, raises, 5% or less. I looked the numbers up last year. The raises in this country were about 3%. That included the people who were promoted change jobs or change employers. So the real numbers were about 1%. As far as um, the uh, functions of a uh, city manager, I've done those functions, I could do those functions, and I, would, I don't need the income. Uh, my retirement income is very healthy. I would be happy to do it the minimum wage. So. <clears throat> What'd you say your first name was? Philip. It's spelled with one L. I got cheated. <laughs> and where'd you say you live? At 136 Meadow Springs Lane. Meadow Springs. And I apologize, but I don't. I haven't felt well over the street, so I'm going to head out. Anybody else have anything? Hi, this is Garrett Wyatt, 421 Old Hickory Circle. When the inflation gets down below 5%, then we consider a less than 5% pay raise. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Sue Jarrett, I'm wearing the hat at 100 East Main Street, Mount Carmel Senior Center. Well, I'll speak up tonight. Uh, Uh, we are having our major fundraiser tomorrow. It ends tomorrow at 12, at 12 o'clock noon. We're having a silent auction. And uh, I appreciate the support that this town gives the Senior Center. And I appreciate the support that most of the citizens of this town give the Senior Center. And if you're not already a senior, you will be one day. And uh, anyways, <laughs> anyways, we're having our, our fundraiser. Uh, and it does end at 12, at 12 noon. And so it is upstairs? Yes, ma'am. Okay, it's upstairs. Yeah, that's the center. Center. And it upstairs. starts again. What time? Again? It's been going on all week that you could do the, the silent the auction bidding. But <coughs> we open at 8 o'clock in the morning. All right. We have breakfast, but you got to be on the list. You got to be on the list to get breakfast now, Jim. Or you yeah. can do that <laughs> Oh, I forgot you can't talk. So you're saying that uh, so that you're going to have a breakfast tomorrow? And no, 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 no. Breakfast if you're, if you're signed up. But we are open in the morning if you want to come by to do on the side of the <clears throat> Anybody else? Okay. Nobody else has anything to say? Okay. Oh, I want to show you something. Miss Baldwin. Baldwin, what is the name of? I've met her through her daughter here a couple of months ago, and uh, she was telling me what a hard time she made was made to have, having it because her husband is terminally ill. And so uh, <clears throat> this came out in the paper and she called me that Chris, that was a good article. And so I wanted to bring it to you. I want to show you what a, a wonderful article this is because it does it help uh, two ladies that has got this grant and they've already been contacted 
this week, and so uh, she called me and asked me, could she come and speak? And I said, you can, do, you can come and anybody can come to speak. Mm -hmm. And she is excited as can be to get this because she, they really do need it. I went by her house, I didn't go in or anything, and she told me where she lived, and it's on Montgomery. And uh, so she, uh, and I just went by there and saw it, and it does need its help. Especially when she can't put out the mold and stuff because her husband is coming. Yes. Yeah, I mean, my I would like to compliment our we like to compliment Christian for his his articles and Tessa. Well, that's exactly what I'm commenting on right now. Is this, this if you didn't see this, it was a really good uh, uh, article and Tessa. Uh, did a, put a good article in here that somebody brought me as far as uh, our police officer that was retiring and had so many years in the police office, uh, office and, and that was Kenny Lunsford Sr. And so he did, uh, you did a wonderful job on that one too. So, but anyway, let's move on. Mm -hmm. Do we'll, did you say something? Mm -hmm. I thought you said something. Uh, old business. Discussion consideration ordinance 24 531 updates the park commission bylaws. Motion needs to pass it. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Alderman Jim Baird? Yes. Alderman Don Gibson? Yes. Alderman Jim Gillen? Yes. Alderman Darby Patrick? Yes. Alderman Mandy Sugar? Yes. Vice Mayor Teresa Malt? No. Mayor Pat Stillman? No. Passed. Discussion consideration uh, the ordinance 24 530, an ordinance to adopt the International Property Maintenance Code. Make a motion to accept it. Second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? I just got a question. Once this, this gets passed, if it gets passed, how long is it going to be before we get taking names from kicking high in? Explain to these folks what this is because they probably don't know. That's why I was asking. The um, international property maintenance codes are codes that are standard for property maintenance. A lot of municipalities adopt it as a whole for enforcement purposes. And in our situation, we have bits and pieces of property maintenance uh, in our code. But as far as uh, the enforcement aspect of it, if we can get these in place, it will make the enforcement aspect of it easier. Um, it has a little more teeth and holds up better in court if there's a violation. And, um, you know, it's just pretty straightforward property maintenance codes. Mm -hmm. What's she like, Alan? So, I mean, it's 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 no, there's no charge. This is just codes that we're, that the board is adopting property maintenance standards. Okay. We discussed this in the meeting with the yes. gentleman. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, not just this meeting, but the work, uh, the work not the workshop, but then we have a, uh, a commission meeting that we worked on this too, I think. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure. I know we discussed it at the last workshop. And this was in conjunction with the employment of safe build. And they were asking the board to uh, adopt these ordinances of the code, the international uh, property maintenance code, uh, so that it would help in enforcement. Unfortunately, we would hit a spot where Vince Fishner, who was an integral part of all of these many, many things, from wastewater to, to the code enforcement, to the building inspector, to anything else, passed on. <coughs> we have had difficulty because it takes credentials to, to enforce these codes uh, but the board has now hired safe bill to do that so hopefully in conjunction with say, the retention of safe bill and their employees and the adoption of the code 
the answer to Jim's question, our goal is that's the mechanisms are now in place for enforcement. We'd like to see it being it pursued on an expedition basis, I think. Yes. <coughs> And Emily, what is the gentleman's name that is over this now that uh, took uh, Vance's place? The company is called Safe Build, and it, we're contracting with them. There is an individual named Jim Sullivan that is local to this area that we've been working with. And he works out of Johnson City. <coughs> I'm not sure. I think that's what he told us in a meeting that night. And he seems really knowledgeable about what the place yes. is coming up with. Yes. Okay. Um, anybody want to ask any questions to the board? <coughs> Alderman Hall, please. Alderman Jim Baer? Yes. Alderman John Gibson? Yes. Alderman Darby Patrick? Yes. Alderman Jim Gillum? Yes. Alderman Mindy Schubert? Yes. Vice Mayor Teresa Mock? Yes. Mayor Pasco? Yes. Uh, new business. Discussion consideration appoint uh, municipal judge for Mount Carmel now. And I had an interview with him and uh, gosh, I spent a long time because I talked to him probably uh, over an hour. And uh, and I talked to another lady that was visited that I felt like that he was, uh, he has his own firm of Kingsport. And I asked also some people I knew that worked, had worked with him and works in the courts up there. And they highly recommended him. And I will tell, I will let Alan explain a little bit about him. Uh, Mr. Williams has been a judge for, not judge, has been an attorney for many years. Uh, he has experience in dealing with uh, people. He's also a Rule 31 mediator, means he's had some training trying to learn how to mediate disputes between parties. Those are characteristics that you want in a judge. Uh, it's not all black and white. Uh, it's actually the third part of the process we just said. We need a building inspector. Uh, we need a code to enforce. We need to bring the code before the judge. So it's all got to go work together in order to be productive. Uh, I think Mr. Williams will um, be a excellent uh, candidate for uh, <coughs> Minister Judge. His first name is Jim, isn't it? Yes, That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like to make a motion to uh, hire him. And he was re uh, he was reasonable with what he wanted. Okay. The, the uh, proper process I think would be to. Uh, retain him to fulfill the remaining term of the present judge, which is just two months, and then come July 1st, you would appoint him to a full two-year term, which is what the, the uh, code of ordinance has said. So uh, at this point, you'd be appointing him to fulfill Mr. Reiser's uh, term, and then come back in July and do it again uh, to do that. And the actual remuneration is set forth in the budget. Uh, it's set for the budget for the last year that he will partake of for his two months, and then you're working on now whatever the budget will be for the uh, judge's position for the coming year. And I also brought Keisha in, and he and her got along really well, and very knowledgeable, and he appreciated you too. We brought him in here, uh, Keisha and I did, and sh to show him our courtroom. He went, whoa, right like it did me. And I said, what? And I thought, he meant, well, look how little this is gonna be. But he said, this is bigger than the King's Court, right? <laughs> and so anyway, I can't imagine, you know. But anyway, so he, he uh, was very knowledgeable, and the woman I talked to and the man I talked to that works in ports up there, said we couldn't go wrong with this man. So. Alan, what is the procedure for putting him as a judge? I'm sorry, what? What is the procedure for him to become a judge here? He was sworn in, and then after he's sworn in, we will have a bond that the town will produce for him. And the, he will then go through a procedure where he'll have to become uh, a certain amount of credentialing uh, to be a municipal judge. Most of it's done online now. 
but it becomes, it, that's why it's not easy to fill it. No longer it has to be so an attorney just about, and then it's a, like you said, the credentialing, uh, because without keeping current, there's a statewide organization, the Municipal Judges Conference, and they'll be required at least once a year, maybe twice a year to go to conferences uh, to get updated on whatever the new laws may have been passed by the legislature. But um, initially, it'll be to bring them in here, swear them in, take the oath, and then go from there. And Emily's also talked to him a good while, didn't you? And so, uh, and I, I bought his number, and he's, his name, his number, Alan. Unfortunately, he's going to be out of town for that. He, I, I wanted to be asking to be here, but he'd already family plans. He's out of town. And I believe he's tried to contact most of the people on the board uh, in that way. Well, that's a good, positive way to meet the board before we bring this up. So, I'd like to make the motion for him to come. Second. I second. I'll second. Roll call, please. Alderman Jim Baer? Yes. Alderman John Gibson? Yes. Alderman Jim Dillon? Yes. Alderman Darby Patrick? Yes. Alderman Mindy Shaker? Yes. <coughs> Vice Mayor Teresa Moss? Yes. Mayor Pat Stiffman? Yes. By the way, he does have his own uh, firm, too. So. Okay. D, <clears throat> discussion and consideration, Ordinance 24532, FY 25 budget and tax rate. Discussion. I'd like to have it tabled and uh, talk about some things at the next workshop. I hear a second. I second that then. All in favor? No. It's going to be roll call. Yeah. Roll call, please. Because we do need to discuss some few, a few things about this and still just because uh, I've got uh, some questions I would like to have asked. So, why not discuss it tonight? Huh? Why not discuss it tonight? Well, yeah, you can discuss it tonight if you want to, but we <coughs> need to discuss it. Um, is it paid for the workshop? I think I am. I'll tell you what I want to know, Mindy. I want to know if every employee's wage is comparable to what it should be. That's what I want to know. I don't want to see it 5% across the board. I want to know that people who have been here for years and did without raises because I was on the board at that time when they didn't get any money to advance their fall. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying. I'm just hey, saying. You know, yeah. cost well, you're, I, I feel like you're saying. a team. We have a motion to the table. We have a second and we have a roll call vote for the table. I'm like Teresa. Let's discuss it again. She so wants to say it. First, you got to okay. have the vote. Then you can decide what comes next. Mm -hmm. Alderman Jim Baer? No. Alderman John Gibson? No. Alderman Jim Gillen? No. Alderman Darby Patrick? No. Alderman Mindy Shooter? No. Vice Mayor Teresa Monk? Yes. Mayor Pat Stewart? Yes. Okay. I would say that we'll get rid of it. There are two readings of this, so you'll have this. There's a second. We can discuss it then again well, I mean, at the next. You should decide whatever you're going to do. But I mean, yes, I'm just saying this is we not. We need to bring this has to be twice, so this and occurred. discuss uh, because we've got some that's going to have a, like a three thousand dollar raise, and others just not going to have that much of a raise. I've never heard of somebody getting a three thousand dollar raise and two thousand dollar raise a year. Well, yes. <coughs> I'm I make a motion to accept it. Uh, Do you ask something, Jim? Never. Yeah, 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 I asked her what's the highest raise that's involved with this. Five percent. Five percent. Give me a dollar. Dollar point on that. It's about base five hundred dollars for one. Would be five percent of whatever the pay is. Thirty-five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would, you would have. It depends on the employee. It's five percent of the <coughs> wages. Did you not? 
you can get a copy of what all the uh, employees make and then what they're making now and times at five percent. What would five percent be on your raise be? On mine? Mm -hmm. um, based on your hourly. Just question. Yeah. You could you have known if you could get one of these, Mandy. Uh, listen, I wholeheartedly agree with raises because our employees aren't paid very much anyway. So any boost of income that can help them get to that living wage, I'm all for it. Well, we don't know what police is coming in and what, uh, what, um, uh, what their wages will be because you've got to go by what, they, uh, what they're making. Is it about $500? A month? Mm -hmm. Well, no, not no. That's for the year. Uh, no, I'm okay. year. No, I'm not year. No, I'm not year. How are we paying for that? I don't see the dispute. What's your hourly wage? Tax rate? Didn't we have them last year? Can I support a parliamentary inquiry? Can we have a motion on the floor? I made a motion. Yes. No, do we have a second? You said you wanted to discuss it, didn't you? Do we have a second? I made a motion to accept Okay, I second the motion. And then when I have the chance for the floor, I appreciate it. Okay, so we have a motion to second. So now we've got, we're in discussion. So when it comes to the, the, the cost of living adjustments and raises and such, looking at the COLA that Social Security has given out over the last three years, 2022, there's a 5.9 increase, 2023, 8.7, 2024, is 3.2, which for the last three years is 17.8%. In 2022, we upped at 5%, 2023, we upped at 5%, and the proposed 2024, 5%. Trying to keep up with that CPIW index, which is the consumer indicator and with inflation and all of that, because if we don't, then you're asking your employees to take a, a cut every year because of the rate of inflation that we're at. They've never, we've never started with high wages, but the more that you're the continuing inflation, which we have no control over, the labor shortages that we're going to incur and we're going to lose good employees who are going to go other places that afford to pay better. So we're trying to, I can continue while I have the floor. So while we're trying to just maintain the cost of living that the, the Social Security Index is at, which is still 2.8% higher. Thank you, I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You didn't, mention, you didn't mention how much Medicare gets of that raise. Insurance get part of that raise too. How their employees pay check? Yeah, mm -hmm. the Medicare payment is one hundred and sixty-two dollars per month oh, per God. person. Paying husband and wife, I do it every month. Sometimes you may get some, you may not get none. Yeah. How many employees? Are we looking at for pay increases? How many do we actually have? To well, we don't have any. It looks like but, uh, two uh, right now. Uh, Lease offices, so we're still gonna interview for that and see how much they have to have. Less than fifteen total. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. In, in twenty twenty two, the impact that a five percent raise had to the overall personnel cost was seventeen thousand dollars. So what does an incoming <coughs> police officer make? That I can't try. I don't have to pay rates in front of me. Seventeen. That was just seventeen dollars an hour. Seventeen dollars. No, I'm sorry. Seventeen fifty. Yes. Seventeen fifty is the starting for the police officer. Well, I can tell you something. You can ask and sign a paper. It's public record what they get. So you can get one of these because I got mine today. I just want to make sure. I don't mind paying. I just want to know that they're there because I needed one Easter weekend and nobody answered the phones and ended up going through Jim to find out something. Mm -hmm. So was I supposed to call 911 for a non-emergency? 
There's a non-emergency number. Yeah, but it lets you know that, you know, and I have a direct number. Like I said, I don't mind paying the cops. I don't mind paying the fire department. I just want to know they're there, and I want to know how much it costs the uh, property taxes, because that's what we're going to pay it out of, right? Is our property tax? Yeah. I got the number if you need it. You know? I don't mind paying for them. just want to know. But is there anything else coming in? into Mount Carmel to help pay for this? Or is everything we're paying out coming out of property taxes? Have you seen a copy of the budget? Excuse me? Have you seen a copy of the budget? No, sir. There's actually a, a surplus currently in the budget and a lot of over projections. When you look at the current actuals of where we're at this year, um, we've over, come in under that of what we're spending. Revenues are coming in over. The idea that we're in like a, a financial downfall or, or shambles is I don't understand where that's coming from because the budget is is significantly healthy. We did raise property taxes last year in order to be more preventative and proactive versus reactive because the inflation rate that we're being continued to be hit with. But to say that this is a bad budget or that we're in some financial strength, I mean, I, I can assure you that the county budget is in much worse shape than this budget is. This, this budget looks significantly better um, with the amount of underspenditures that we're coming in where our department heads are not spending the entire budget when they don't have to. We're turning money to the general fund each year. We have a healthy general fund that's been continuing to grow to the point that we're addressing that and item E. Um, but yes, no, I understand what you're saying. And the police department losing the, the police officers all at the same time actually has been, um, was, was impacted to that. But we've got a new police chief. Uh, he's in the back there. I encourage you to speak with him. Yeah, I he's got a great, um, a great plan for the um, police department going forward and, and with that for this motion, can I call for the question? Can I ask a question? Yes. What about the $921,000 that's coming out over the next five years for roads to be repaid? Uh, this budget? Over five years, that's what I said. Not this year, but over five years. $921,000 for that. That was an estimate. That was an actual. Well, if you add them all up, it comes out to $921,000. It was an estimate. They're not saying they're going to pay for it. If you read the, if you read the article, it is. So why you put that right. I think we have to get back to the Robert's Rules of Order, and that's that we at this point have a motion, a second. We've had discussion. We're going to call for the question. Uh, unless there's an objection, we'll take roll call and vote. Alderman Jim Bayer? Yes. Alderman John Gibson? Yes. Alderman Jim Gilmore? Yes. Alderman Darby Patrick? Yes. Alderman Mindy Schubert? Yes. Vice Mayor yes. Teresa Mock? Mayor Pat Stillwell? No. Um, motion passes. We'll have the second reading at the next meeting. Moving on, discussion and consideration make investment in the local government investment pool. Discussion. So moved. What? So moved. I make the motion to accept, to, to make that investment, to adopt the, the motion. Well, we need to discuss this. We've been taking the point of order to make it. We take a motion first, then a second, then discussion. Second. I see you got a motion by Mr. Dixon and a second by Ms. Shooter. And then, I guess, discussion. Well, uh, we need to discuss this again, too, the investment pool. Explain it. I bet you all don't know what that is either, do you? Mm -hmm. Would what you explain it? What's that? It's uh, on your uh, number E. It's discussion and consideration to make investment in a local government investment pool. Could you discuss Could you the... Uh, Perhaps the administrator can explain what the parameters of that investment of that particular discussion consideration is. And that's basically, I guess, back to Mr. Billings, uh, Mr. Gibson's uh, 
rendition of the budget and surplus? Can you yes. tell them what, what, what this would mean? What is the local government investment pool? Okay, local government investment pool is set up through the state of Tennessee Treasury Department. It's a way for local governments, municipalities to invest their money without having it tied up in CDs. Um, the rate of return has been really high for the last two years. It's been over 4% and in the last year has been over 5% monthly. So we are at a point, we got some uh, numbers back from our auditor uh, a couple of weeks ago and we've got a very <coughs> healthy fund balance we've got um, a really good budget right now so the thought was to invest uh, up to three million dollars in the general fund and up to one million in the sewer fund so that we can receive the um, interest off of that as a, a new source of revenue so um, it would, you know, it doesn't hurt anything to do that. We don't need the money because our budget is at, I think, $4 million. So um, that money would either sit in the bank and not make a lot of interest, or it can be invested in local government investment pool with the state, and we can um, yield a return on that of up to 5%. So how much would that be? Per year for each investment, you put a million dollars in it. I would have to calculate the numbers. I found the, the calculation to see what we could get off of that, um, but I didn't get a chance to work it out before the meeting. Would that rate fluctuate with interest changes? It would, yes. And does the time, if, if um, there was a fast track event that required you had to need a surplus of money, are you able to pull that back out almost immediately, or does it take a waiting period, or are you losing fees? No. no, it's it is not tied up like it would be in an a CD or a, a different type of investment. This is uh, free flowing in and out. You know, you you do have to go through a process and an application, and that's why I brought it to the board. But it's um, it's it's a really good option for municipalities to invest. And that revenue would be unrestricted next year. Any, any revenue that would come in from that would just be unrestricted for any type of uh, capital improvement projects or any type of anything that we needed to use that for. Correct. Offsetting, offsetting costs, essentially. Yes. But it goes in a certain account, right? It's a reserve account or what? What kind of account would it be? It, does, it, it stays in the pool. It stays in the investment pool. It just and comes, you just draw it out when you need it? Yes. It's, it's more or less a savings account, but it's it's like invested, yeah. That's through the state of Tennessee? Yes, the Treasury Department. They just make a ton of money off of it. My contract is really good. So, uh, we, we needed a new police car. I mean, a way to pay for a police right. car. We need the civil police car. We have, have to wait for doing it there. So I make a motion to accept that. For the motion. Motion to accept that. Yeah. You can second it. No. Okay. That's Jim. Wait just a moment, please. I'm like, mm -hmm. you made the motion. Right. John, John did. Yes. John made the motion. And who the second? Andy did. Andy. Mm -hmm. I guess not. I mean, where my hearing aids anyway. John. I have to be Johnny on the spot a little bit, I guess. It doesn't matter. Okay. Roll call, please. Alderman Jim Bear? Yes. Alderman John Gibson? Yes. Alderman Jimmy Gillen? Yep. Alderman Darby Patrick? Yes. Alderman Mindy Sugar? Yes. Vice Mayor Teresa Mock? Yes. Mayor Pastillo? Yes. Okay. In the session in F is the session of consideration to incur PE cost for the railroad underpass. And Mindy, you'll have to explain, I mean, Emily, you'll have to explain that one too. For this, this is right out here of Hammond Avenue, that, that other pass right there. They won't fix it, but they won't buy it. Hi. <laughs> That'd be nice, they won't buy it. Sandy would be. <laughs> <laughs> I 
reached out to the North Norfolk Southern um, to just inquire about what could happen at this underpass and got a very matter of fact uh, reply that if we're willing to spend or incur the cost up to $20,000 in preliminary engineering that they would then come and look at what could be done. So um, you're saying the engineer just to come and inspect it and then we have to pay up to 20000 right? I'm not saying they're even inspecting it. I asked what we could do to widen the underpass and they said if you will incur up to twenty thousand dollars in preliminary engineering costs we will do preliminary engineering so i feel certain that there would be more expenses to come after that mm -hmm. but what we need to know is does the board wish to look into widening the underpass for the town's benefit, or um, do we just leave it as is? I'm, I'm still trying to communicate with uh, different various people, Lundberg's office, uh, Art Barker. Um, one of them I talked to uh, the other day, and they said that TDOT wasn't even aware that we had an issue. That's how- They didn't even help the police and the rescue map the environment. That's in Nashville. This is just, if I understand it, I'm going to go into the, the, the details. As I understand it, this is basically the Norfolk Southern way of saying, if you're serious about doing this, no. then we'll, you're going to pony up $20,000 for preliminary engineering study. Based upon that, they'll come look at it and give you a figure, a dollar figure, what it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. As far as how that's going to be financed and what they're willing to pay, or that that's all up in the air. So they did not finance it, well, Alan. I, I, I didn't think they would. But. No, I talked to I talked to uh, people in Atlanta. That evidently is our contact with Norfolk Southern. And when I talked to one man years ago, uh, he just basically said, "Well, just go ahead and do it yourself." You know, we don't have millions and millions. The second man I talked to, he estimated, gave a rough estimate of 10 million. And he said we had to go through TDOT. He said that he did know people. And I put a call in to him. I haven't heard back from him. He may be on vacation. I don't know. He's a very nice man. How did they get church yield 20 years ago? It's a state road. Yeah. Is well, there a on a state road right here? No. I just think. That's their, uh, I, I call where I come from, Bidoff. That's their Bidoff. They haul coal over it. I don't know how many times a day. That is their problem. And I'm, I'm just going to <coughs> down here just to drop that. Well, this is just the way it's come up, and it's come up several times, and the citizens are obviously concerned about it because they have to go and through that tunnel every day. Right? Under I mean, the the right. Right. Yeah. I go, I go through it every day. But the question is, is the town want to take the money to do that? Emily, I talked to um, Jeff Jackson um, a few weeks back, and he attended the Kingsport Metropolitan Transportation Planning Organization. Do we have anybody going there now? Occasionally we'll go, yes. He said at one point we were actually on um, their budget or whatever you would refer to them uh, to have it done at one point. I may have seen it. So, I mean, there may, there may be a way that we can get it done. This town can't finance it, that's for sure. If we can find the right person with T-Dolph, but T-Dolph's the one that does it. So going through Norfolk, that's just a waste of money. We have a motion on the floor from Alderman Dillon to dismiss. Second. So now we're still in discussion, right? Correct. So when it comes to money from T dot, I say we're we're going to be barking up a uh, helpless tree on that because uh, I said any money any money is coming from in this area from there will be going towards that project in Goshen Valley. This is more um, 
I would say more of a would like to have or would be good to widen the road versus an actual true um, emergency. emergency type situation. Yeah. So I'd say we're looking at having to fund this on our own if we do. Mm -hmm. And being such a large project like it is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, I, I agree. There's no way we can afford that. <clears throat> but I would like to say if we whine enough and long enough, somebody will get tired of us and put it on the to-do list with TDOT, but we need, we need to know the correct people to talk to. And that man with Norfolk Southern, he said he had some contacts. So I'm, I'll keep calling him and see what we can find out, but we're just gonna have to keep whining and whining and whining. If that's what it takes, whine. Well, why can't we update the safety on it? Like put the yield sign up our flashing lights. Well, I mean, when, why when can't we, we do that? When we started that, uh, TDOT was supposed to uh, fix this, uh, something for the police and the fire and the rescue squad where they had control over the red light. Why that never happened, I don't know, but somebody said that the uh, vehicles, they can um, control that somehow themselves. Maybe, maybe our new fleet, have you ever never been in that situation? But there's some way they can trigger and hold the red light. It was like, you were talking about that house on fire, uh, was, yeah, you know, sure I mean, uh, the that happened right at school time. That did, did that happen right at school time? Yeah. I mean, and it's crazy to yeah, and, uh, and uh, that them cars parking out on Hammond Avenue blocking traffic. It's going to cause an accident. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to change the subject. I just, yeah, the safety on Hammond, we've got a lot of building up and houses being built. We need to update Hammond <coughs> and the tunnel. It's getting crazy. Well, Teresa. Let's just let you call this week and see what they say and, and, and let I'll us know on. at the next uh, uh, workshop. workshop. Because, on. I mean, we just need to keep on and on and on until... Okay, the motion in second, though, is for do you want to instruct the town administrator to proceed any further at this point other than taking the information she was already obtained? If not, then I think we, should. we need to give her some guidance with it. We should go further with I have a, I have a motion and a second to go no, further. What? Not to go further. I have a motion and a second to go no further. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to go no further. Okay. Well, roll call. Alderman Jim Mayer. If I say yes, I'll be for you not to continue, correct? Yes. Yes. Alderman John Gibson. Yes. Alderman Jim Gillum. Alderman Darby Patrick. Yes. Alderman Mindy Schubert. Yes. Vice Mayor Teresa Mark? Yes. Mayor Pascal? Yes. Well, Teresa, you just got your hands full to find out what's going on with you. Because I know that I I go through that, but I'm every time I go have to come out of here, I go through that. Every time I go back in, I go through that. But you have to be stopping and being in safe mind and giving courtesy to the men or woman that comes through that and they give you courtesy. I, I've never really had anybody to just fly through that and make me stop. They call us in courtesy. So I've lived here busy years, so. So, okay. Um, all right. So, um, <coughs> okay. Darby, do you have any comments? No. <coughs> John? I've just got just a couple. Um, I wanted to thank the police chief for an option we have for seeing the work y'all are doing with the um, school zone down here. I can already tell the difference has been made. Appreciate that. What's then? What was then down here? They're enforcing the ordinance that the school zone to stop some of that traffic stopping up. Over the last week or so, you've been right. notice the difference. Yeah. And I just want to thank you thank for you. working on that. Um, also, we will meet again before it, but the uh, the nerve events coming up soon, and just to get that out there, that's coming up on. Do you have the date? Uh, May twenty fifth. May twenty fifth at two thirty. Do we have a meeting before that again? We do. So, well, we can announce that again. And we will, there'll be a press release and everything. Um, but but uh, they go to mountcarmelevents.com. They can go ahead and pre-register to get them um, set up. So and that is mountcarmelevents.com. That's all I got. Jim? You? <laughs> I'm, like I'm coming to, down the I'm just coming down the road. Uh, I would like to um, repeat what our fire chief has said about a couple of his guys. 
Um, Assistant Chief Carly Wesso passed his National Registry EMR test. And Firefighter Michael Clark passed his National Registry EMT basic test. And President Patrick obtained his wild land firefighter certification. So that's kudos to our, our fire department. Do you see, does he work over there now? Uh, just what? part time, or he was a birth of that. But he, he volunteers, or? Yeah, he's still a, a lifetime uh, volunteer over there. Okay. I was thinking, he, he and he was good when yeah, he was here. I, he I, I ain't bragging. I mean, I'm bragging on him, but yeah, he, I, I knew him yeah, he when he was young boy in school. He works at Bristol now. So, okay. Jim Gillen? Nothing. Nothing. Teresa? Um, I would like to say to Emily, what we were talking about before we came in here, I am concerned that the employees pay some of the older ones. I'm not sure where they're at yet because they had to do without money for so many years. Uh, I would like to see some type of wage where um, that's considered the normal wage for people to do the jobs that they're doing and where our people stand at that point. I, I don't, across the board is one thing, but maybe they need to be brought up, period, instead of just giving it's across the boards. Maybe some of them need to have a drastic increase in their wage. I don't know, but it's something that we do need to know. I'll get that information. Now, you see, that's what I think, too, is that, you know, like Jason and I, Carl has been here. <clears throat> Lord have mercy, since they got out of school, because yeah. I had Jason in school. Oh, wait a minute, I'm telling my age. So anyway, uh, but uh, I, I'm like you, I think it should be considered of the people who's been here, they've been here 20 some years, I'd say. Do you remember how, how many years they have, Emily? Um, Carl's been here for over, well over 20. And Jason is too. I know Jason got came at, out here right after he graduated from high school, and so then you got to work up to a certain wage. As every year, I know when I was teaching school, I didn't get no big raise like we're asking five percent or anything else. Working in the school system, they don't either. I got a daughter and a son-in-law and a granddaughter teaching school, and they don't get no big raises. But anyway, I want to thank all of you all for coming. And anybody want to say anything for me? Wait just a minute. Somebody want to say something. Who? I said you're not finished with comments. Oh, Emily, you got comments? Yeah. You got a comment? Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? I second it, Johnson. And do uh, I have a second? You, you, you say you yeah. made a motion? Oh Wait a minute, Emily. I have not said, Jim has not said something. What did you say? Thank you. We already had a motion. And well, now we're going to have a second. Well, if you stop talking, you're